Now I'm sure it's here somewhere, just gotta find it. Let's have a look. Headstock. Blue guitar. No idea. Hang on. Bass guitar, neck slope. Oh, that sounds promising. Um have we hang on, what's this? Bass guitar. Aha. Let's get going. Good afternoon and welcome to my workshop. And welcome back to part two of my series of the bass guitar refit. And um, well, things are gonna get a little bit more drastic today because uh, as I've been thinking about this, I've had lots of ideas. Now then, I've just found the plans for the uh, bass guitar, which is going to be useful. Um, I've also got the uh, diagram I did for the neck brake angle, which I'm hoping that's going to be useful. And I've also found my little mermaid symbol. Now I should explain that when my daughters were younger, they loved the little mermaid film. And um, I used to cut a little mermaid out of toast for them and um, I just did this little sketch and I rather liked it and I've always wanted to do this as an inlay um, but never managed to do it so I'm just wondering whether I can actually try and do this in the fretboard of this bass guitar. I've got some shells and bits and pieces and um, I'm just wondering whether I can construct something that looks reasonable. So that's going to be part of this project. Anyway, yes, well, you see I've been thinking, I took the fretboard off and as you know when I turned the guitar over, well the headstock looks a bit of a mess and to be honest with you the neck itself is a bit of a mess I used well I can't remember what I used on here it was a water-based lacquer and the problem with it is that when your hands sweat the lacquer sort of gets really sticky and um, well it looks pretty horrible to be honest with you this needs drastic measures. Now look, I'm sorry, if guitar butchery bothers you, you might have to look away. This is not gonna be a pretty sight. As my old boss used to say, give me a good reason why not to do it. <laughs> okay, calm down folks, it's only the neck of a bass guitar. And quite honestly, it's not a very good neck. So this is the best thing for it. Timber. Okay, with that gone, we've now got something we can work with. Now what I'm gonna do is take all this varnish off and I need to take the top of this guitar off to go down to at least the level of this uh, inset here because um, I don't wanna have an inset and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm afraid this is going in the off cut bin because there's nothing I can do with that.
just like to say, if anybody from Triton is watching, I love my belt sander, but this black paint just comes off on the wood all the time. And it is really, really annoying. Anyway, um, making a progress with this, I'm just gonna carry on. Well, that's the back done. I mean, look at that grain. Who'd wanna cover up that grain, eh? Well, I did. Anyway, uh, it's revealed again now. So, uh, let's see if we can fit this in this fixture. Just turn off the air cleaner for a moment. Okay, so now I'm going to plane the top down. And to do that, I'm going to use my old trusty Black & Decker plane. This guitar was made with all hand tools, so I would have used this plane to flatten the wood, as well as hand planes as well. Um, so I suppose it's only right that I, I use it to uh, thin it out a bit now. I mean, if I could get it in the thicknesser, I would, but it's too wide. So, let's get this plugged in and uh, do a bit of planing. I'm just going to run my hand plane across it just to see if I can take out some of these uh, lumps and bumps. That's actually pretty good. I think um, some nice heavy sandpaper will do that. Again, what a lovely grain. You know, just I do a lot of dust extraction. I really don't like dust. It uh, really is not my friend, or anybody's friend for that matter. Let's just undo that. Come on. That's it. Okay, we're getting there. You know, it's just occurred to me that I might be able to get this paint off using a scraper. I've not um, used scrapers very often, but let's, let's give it a go. Certainly taking the worst off. I suspect I'm going against the grain there. Push it instead. Well, look, it's working, but as I'm doing this, I'm thinking. I might be better just to carve this again because uh, yeah get a better finish that's what I'm going to do I say carve it but I'm going to use some 60 grit on the orbital sander and see if I can smooth that out and shape it a bit more let's get my mask on right Get the fan on.
needs a bit more work, but that's looking pretty good. Rather like that. Okay, I'm gonna carry on with the rest of it. So to have a quick recap of where I've got to today, I've got the the dye, the stain off the front and the paint off the back. Uh, not too worried about the recess. I've just got some little bits to deal with, which I'm going to have to do by hand, I think, or with a small um, spindle on the belt sander there. Otherwise, it's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to call it a day for today and uh, come back to it tomorrow. I have to be honest, the one thing I can't stand is coming into a mucky workshop in the morning. So I always have a clear up at night. Of course, Karen wishes I'd keep the house uh, as tidy as this. <laughs> there you go. Right. Now, I hope by the time that this video goes out that my friend Scott Bonehead Guitars is fully recovered and back building guitars. So, Scott, go and build some junk. <laughs> Good afternoon. I say afternoon because I've spent the whole morning trying to sort things out for this guitar. Now, yesterday I sanded all the um, the paint and the dyes off, apart from a few little places. So I'm really happy with the way that's looking. I also found the plans for this bass guitar that I'd drawn up some while ago and um, I've really been trying to work out how I'm going to replace this neck. So let me explain. Now my original idea was to use this piece of maple and just make a, a solid neck out of that. Now the problem is that that's, this is a 600 mil length piece and that's only just long enough. And the other problem is if I flip this over, you'll see that's the oak back. I'm just not convinced that a maple neck is gonna look much good against that oak. So what can I do? Well, this guitar is gonna have a touch of the use what you've got challenge about it because I've got a limited amount of timber left and no real practical opportunity at the moment to get any more. So if I discard the um, maple, I'm really left with two other options. Um, one being this <laughs> church pew, which my, uh, my dad rescued from his local church before they ripped them all out, which is oak. And I think that will clean up pretty well. And it looks like it might be the right width for me. Or, conversely, I use a piece of cherry that I've got here, which is a nice piece of wood. Um, just not sure that cherry is going to go with the oak. Do you know what? I'm tempted to use this oak. Um, because I think having an oak back to match the back of the guitar is going to look much better than trying to put in a different wood that isn't a contrast uh, like the, 
the cherry is too close to the the oak color and it just doesn't really go so i think i'm going to use this i'm going to certainly slice it down and have a look at it um, i've also got this piece of ash which i could use for the uh, headstock which would be quite nice to have the headstock matching the front of the guitar there i've also got another piece of ash if this isn't any good so yeah, I think I'm going to give it a go. Right, before I do anything though, before I cut it on my bandsaw, I'm just going to check there's no nails in this. I don't think they use nails when they put these together. But uh, it's worth just checking. <laughs> Saves your bandsaw blade. I think we're safe. Okay, let's get this set up. By using the piece of oak, I can actually go a bit longer than uh, the 600 mil that I was going to before. So 620 is actually about the length that I need to go. And the reason I know that is that I pulled the old neck out of the bin and just lined it up with the drawing. And I can see that it's it's about 620 there where the, the nut should be. And, that, that's just about right for me. So, I've updated the drawing. I've got my uh, little nut template here, which I can just put on the line, the center, centralize that. And I'll use this for getting the, uh, the string positions so that I can make sure the, uh, the, the machine heads are in the right place when we come to it. Okay, back to finishing this oak. Now then, it looks really nice. I have a feeling there may be two pieces joined there because the grain, yeah, it looks definitely like there's two pieces that have been joined. I actually only need a piece which is 20 mil uh, thick. So I should be able to uh, to rip that out of there. So far so good. And that's a lovely bit of grain in there. Okay, so I've got that side done. Now I need to rip it down on the other side. I bandsawed it to 70 mil wide and I think it's 23 mil, it's actually nearly 24 mil thick. thick. So um, I'm now gonna run it through the thicknesser just to take it down to near 22 mill and I'm just going to square off the sides. Okay. I think I'm just in luck because I notice there's a joint there which obviously goes through into the wood so I'm gonna to have to cut it off there. I've also got this piece out at the end here but in between those two pieces I have well I have 60 67 centimeters 670 so I only need 620 so even cutting those pieces off, I've still got enough. You only really appreciate the workmanship that went into these uh, pews uh, when you actually take it apart. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, I don't know how old these are, but I mean, it must be, I don't know, 70, 80, perhaps 100 years old. I don't know. Well, folks, with the neck blank cut, I'm going to call it a day for this video. Um, I've actually spent quite a bit of time today just fiddling around 
trying to find different size bridges um, because of the piece of wood I originally thought I was going to use for the neck that maple wasn't long enough and I was going to have to move the bridge back and that meant it hanging over the edge and it was all getting a bit difficult but then I realized that the maple just didn't go with the oak and uh, so the church pew has come to the rescue and I'm really pleased with the way that looks I think it's going to look really nice so just to explain where I'm going with this project now well certainly for this week I like the grain of the wood so I'm not going to try and dye it or stain it in any way I'm just going to put some lacquer on it because I think it's going to look really nice um, I like this fretboard and um, I can cut it without having to worry about that little hole that's in there so that's not a problem I'm going to put some binding on that so the fretboard will be narrower than the neck uh, now let's think what else I'm going to use the ash for the headstock because I think that will be nice as well now then so in the next episode I'm going to need to make myself another fret slotting jig because the ones that I've well the one I've got is for um, six string guitar and I need a long neck bass one so I've got an idea of how to make that and I'm going to be making that in the next video um, I'm going to use a bolt on neck for this guitar like I've done with all my other guitars I've made recently and I'm going to use a single roofing bolt just exactly the same as I do with the six string guitars uh, and the dovetail joint that slots inside the body because I'm convinced that is going to be able to support the pressure of the strings of course the proof of the pudding will be in the uh, the tasting as they say anyway thank you very much for watching this episode I shall be back in the not too distant future with the rest of this project it's getting really exciting now um, really pleased with what I've done with this guitar and um, well let's see how it turns out in the meantime you stay safe cheers <laughs>